so for the next speaker, he will be uh, discussing the BIFA project, so which refers to uh, the digitization of the Philippine bats and associated organisms. So to introduce our next speaker, uh, Ms. Yen. Our next speaker is, is Sir Philip Alviola. He is an associate professor at the Institute of Biological Sciences, UPLB. Sir Philip is a trained wildlife biologist with 25 years experience in a publication track record of more than 50 research articles in scientific journals. His area of expertise includes mammalian ecology and taxonomy, cave bats ecology, conservation biology, and bat zoonotics. In October of 2021, he was appointed as a member of the WHO Scientific Advisory Group for the Origins of no Novel pathog Pathogens, or SAGO, which is tasked to advise WHO on the development of an overarching global framework to define and guide studies into the origins of emerging and re-emerging pathogens of epidemic and pandemic potential. Sir Philip has been involved in the bat zoonotic research since 20, 2007 in collaboration with several international universities and institutions. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for, for that very flattering, well, generous um, introduction. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, a few minor adjustments. Okay, so I'm here to present uh, the, 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 our project uh, that's hosted by the Museum of Natural History. All right, so the, the title of our project is uh, Digitization, Georeferencing, and Mobilization of Philippine Phaeroptera and Associated uh, Ectoparasites and Pathogens from the UPLB Museum of Natural History. So, okay. Right, so about the project. So this project is funded by the Biodiversity Information Fund for Asia, so it's BIFA. Uh, we have a collective um, grant totaling to more than 15,000 euros. And the fund code is BIFA 6, uh, uh, 026. So it's a six iteration of the, the BIFA for, for Asia. And the project duration uh, for, uh, for project, uh, it started uh, in January of this year up to February of next year, so around 14 months. So our project is about, uh, you know, like I said, Kanina, it's a did wow, really hard time <laughs> mentioning. Okay, digitization of the UPLB MNH collection. Uh, we were using the Darwin Core standards uh, specifically on four uh, holdings. First would be the, uh, the DS Rabor, uh, Chiroptera Historical Collection. The second is the Zoology New Series Chiroptera Collection. And then we're also going to digitize the collection stamina on bat ectoparasites. And of course, uh, information coming from uh, detected bat-borne pathogens, uh, particularly on viruses. So as mentioned earlier, so we, uh, the Museum of Natural History have been conducting research on backborne pathogens since 2007. So it was a great opportunity for, for to be involved in this kind of project for digitization. Of course, it's to, 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 to lay it out uh, for the world to see what are the viruses or even other pathogens that are currently found in bats here in the Philippines. Then of course, uh, this will appear in the form of data sets. And this will be published in the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, or GBIF. Okay. So um, before we start, okay, so before I, I, I describe uh, our projects, our deliverables, uh, some of our activities. So what is GBIF? Okay, so probably most of you have heard of GBIF, and it stands for uh, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. So it's an international network and data infrastructure funded by the world's governments and aimed at providing anyone, anywhere, an open access to data about all types of life on our planet. So um, it's more like a intergovernmental agreement, of course, a lot of the governments, uh, particularly in the EU, uh, in the US, so contribute a substantial amount of funds for in order to, to come to the surface, all of the, well, most of the, the data on biodiversity on our planet. Of course, uh, 
in some instances, some of these data are really well hidden, so cannot be accessed, like here in the Philippines, of course, in other third world or in developing countries. So there's a very great opportunity to, to for other scientists to around the world to, to, to get access to these very hard sought, hard sought out uh, data. Okay, so uh, this is what um, our project would look like under in the, if you click in the GBIF uh, um, website or portal. So as you can see there, uh, you're seeing the title and then the duration and the, 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 the grant amount. And of course, a lot of information associated with our project. So what's shown here is the, the golden crown flying fox and it's a picture. And then you have uh, information about our project, uh, news and events, uh, what are the current um, activities that are being done by the project. And of course the data sets itself, uh, themselves. So I've mentioned before, so we have four data sets that needs, uh, we are currently uh, digitizing. All right, so we go to the project members. So the majority of the, the members for this project are, uh, are, um, are among museum staff, okay? So of course me, I'm a curator, I, I lead the project. And then we have uh, project staff, see, see Dexter Lumiba who, who delivered an excellent talk a while ago. And then we have a full-time staff, see, see JJ, Jesril Jager Garcia. So it's doing full-time work. Um, uh, for this project and well, also uh, made this presentation, a lot of the, the presentation for, you know, and very, very well, we are very, very much thankful to him. And then from the museum staff, so we have Flora Cruz, of course, he's the boss floor for spe specimen imaging, he's the Edison Bosco for the preparation of collection records and specimens as well. See Miss Amy Aguila, the admin officer, so the ever tireless admin officer, so who's doing, so who's doing the, the nitty gritty of the, the logistics, the administrative um, um, details of the project. And of course, with Dr. Jen Niem, Jennifer Niem, so who's also involved in the data encoding. Okay, so we also have partners from several institutions. Okay, so. <clears throat> First off, uh, in the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity here in Forestry. So we have partners you know, see from ACB, see Christian Eloran. So they are the, uh, they act as the, the GBIF node manager. <clears throat> and then we also have um, international collaborators or partners here. Uh, first off would be <clears throat> see Dr. Tomo Matsu from the Tokyo University Agriculture and Technology. So his role for, for the project is uh, is a microbiologist consultant for pathogen data, uh, and then we're also joined by Dr. Shumpei Watanabe uh, from Okayama University of Science. Uh, <clears throat> so his role for this project is uh, he's a virologist, and he would be providing most of the data on 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 the viruses that we detected uh, from our virus back virus project. So what's the digitization process. So what, what do we actually do? So I mentioned before that we're using the Darwin core standards. So in, in putting in all the, the, the entries and uh, types of data that we're putting in into the, to the, the portal. So it, the, the, the process comes in three, three parts. So the first would be the data capture, which involves a lot of encoding, of course, so we're, we're, we're transferring the, the information coming from the specimens themselves, from the tags, from the ledgers, from the, the catalog sheets, the field notes, and then we're transferring that, encoding that to first in, a, in an Excel format with all the, the headings as prescribed by the Darwin Core format. And then uh, we are also currently doing specimen imaging of representative species uh, for, for bats. And then we put in um, the, the coordinates, so georeferencing. So we're looking in, uh, we're uh, deriving information of these coordinates from from catalog sheets, and in some instances for 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 other specimens or records that don't have um, coordinates. So we, what we sometimes do is we we try to locate that to the nearest barangay, you know, the nearest um, village 
where we can where we know the coordinates, and then we do the standardization. So using the Darwin core format, and then after that, so after we put in all the information to the, to the Excel, uh, now we go to the data management. Of course, all of the information prior to this are still considered raw. So it has to undergo data cleaning. So checking of the information, correct spelling. Uh, and of course, we also do quality control. So we will do the correct spelling, the correct locality, even for the, for the information on the coordinates. So sometimes we have to verify that from, from uh, when we copy that from catalog sheets, from field notes, so we have to verify that you know if if, uh, if it's actually the correct coordinate, if it's actually would point to the correct locality. Then of course we document all of these. Uh, yeah. and then after that, so we now uh, publish the the encoded data via the, the GBIF uh, portal. So uh, the GBIF portal has this integrated publication uh, publishing toolkit. So later on, I will show you what, what, what it will look like. So all of the, the information there. So uh, right now using the Darwin core format, we have a total of 20 headings, uh, 20 in different types of information that are associated with each specimen. So you can imagine so the, 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 the enormity of the information that are housed uh, in this portal. And then of course, uh, these information are considered can be considered as metadata and can actually be used by other users as well when they visit the GBIF portal. Uh, what, uh, we're now into the activities that we have conducted so far, um, starting from the, uh, well, from, from, from January up to the present. So first off, we, we had a leveling off and planning workshop. So this was done in May 13. You may have noticed that we've only done this, uh, well, May 13, but the project already started in uh, the January of this year. So it, we had like a five month delay in doing this leveling off and planning workshop. Uh, I would, uh, well, we would attribute this of course with, um, you know, um, the effects of the, the pandemic. So it was really, you know, a lot of things have, have been affected by the pandemic. And of course uh, the, the project implementation for this uh, project it has not been spared. And then so, well, uh, but so we had conducted this planning workshop together with the 10 museum staff, so via Zoom. So, so during this meeting, so we, we uh, the attendees, attendees were oriented about the project overview, uh, the deliverables and the timeline uh some discussion on the, the funds uh of course the appointment of project members so uh the, the this project uh this being hosted by the museum of natural history is registered of course uh under the uplb foundation of course so the fund management is being conducted by by uplb fi uh, so this is um, just a snapshot, well, uh, some photos uh, of what we did during the, 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 um, the planning workshop. So you can see there the, the attendees. Um, and then we have so a screenshot of the, the people that, are in, that were involved during, those, uh, during the, 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 the leveling workshop. So all smiles, you know, we're still all smiles. And uh, I think they're still all smiles right now. Okay. Despite the, the the difficulties that we encountered uh, with, with with the project, and then of course uh, after the leveling workshop, so that's where the work the started uh, the, the 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 nuts and bolts of the project. So um, I'm proud to to present to you that we have delivered uh, a lot of of milestones for this project. First of which would be uh, we've already digitized the, the new series Chiroptera bats collection of uh, the UPLB MNH Zoological and Wildlife uh, Museum. So the data set type for, for the, this, this, um, for this uh, the first deliverable are occurrences data. And we had an approximate uh, number of records totaling to 1,118 specimen records. So this was derived from our work from 2000 to 
2021, more than 20 years of specimen collecting. And of course, uh, the data holders, uh, the, 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 the ownership of this data, definitely, even the, the digitized uh, form would be the UPLB m &H, and the host would be GBIF Asia. And uh, from our project document, uh, we had um, targeted 1,000 specimen records, and we managed to, to, to update ourselves and uh, overshoot uh, our target to more than 118 specimens. So it's about 100% complete. And you can access the, the information of the, the, our data set, the published data set through this DOI, which I will show you in a while. Okay. So this is what it look like, looks like. So this is a GBIF portal. So it's already been published. Uh, sorry, the UPLB Museum of Natural History, Zoology and Wildlife Museum, Hyroptera collection. So you're seeing here the, some of the details in the project, as well as uh, a map, the occurrences map of all the specimen records. So as you can see here, uh, um, there's a website about our project. So you're seeing here the, the, the point localities. So we've had records from a lot of localities from up north. Um, we had one from Pangasinan, Colilio here, and then um, lots of records as well in Marinduque and in, in, in the Calabarzon area. We have several from Bicol, from Cebuyan, and then in Cebu, we've had fairly uh, several records there. And in Mindanao from Chargao and in, uh, in the Davao region, of course, in Mindanao. So, but what you have to realize is that these are the 1,118 specimen records that are that's published here in GBIF. It's just a snapshot of the actual number of specimens, the new series specimens for bats here that are housed in the Museum of Natural History. So this represents about something about 30% uh, of all the specimens that we have housed. So in the future, uh, even after the project life, we would like to continue and uh, digitizing under the GB format and eventually tr uh, transfer all of those information uh, in this website. Uh, this is, okay, so further look into the, our data set, so it's a GB portal. So some of the details. And what's very important here, if you try to look here at the bottom, so you see here the citation. So essentially the, 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 the data set that we publish can also act as a literature. So there's a proper citation for, for the published data. So as you can see here, so parang bibliographical entry. And it's uh, in, some, in some ways can be treated as a published uh, article as well. So, and, and can be used, of course, for, for, for purposes of, for your resume, definitely. So, yeah, so you can see there, so it's, uh, there's a citation uh, for, for the data set. And actually, so um, our data set was already cited um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a paper, I think, uh, in Communications Biology, which is a subsidiary of Nature Journal. So we published the data in 2001, uh, 2000, no, no, uh, in August 1 of 2022. So we published the data set. And three days after, meron na kagad na nakapag-publish, deriving the information from our data set. So uh, it's very important. You can see the title of the paper, more than half of data deficient species predicted to be threatened by extinction. So it gives, uh, to be, to be able to, to know that your data set has been used by, by, by uh, scientists from, from other places in the world and publishing that in a, uh, in a very high impact journal. So uh, you can see the utility of the project. So, so you see the benefits of you know, sharing the, your information and not having that being just stored away and being you know, uh, considered as gray, gray data or gray literature. So, you know. And then uh, other updates on, uh, updates on other deliverables. So I've mentioned this before, we have four data sets that will be uh, uh, 
for the project to, to publish. So the second of that uh, is the UPLB Museum of Natural History, the Esra Bor Kairoptera collection. Okay, so um, see, um, Mr. Dex uh, Lumibao just presented a while ago. So the, the status of the re-inventory of the, the DS Rabor um, specimen collection. And um, so we've also uh, have, have our share of digitizing the, 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 the DS Rabor collection, specifically dun sa Kairoptera collection. And similar to the first data set, it's, uh, uh, it's, a data, uh, it's an occurrence type data set. So essentially occurrences, what are the localities that are uh, where these specimen records are found? <clears throat> so the description for the DS Robor uh, Chiroptera collection that we will be digitizing is that uh, essentially these are historical data of the, 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 the bats that are housed, the DS Robor from, <clears throat> from 1940s up to the 1980s. So you see here, um, these are relatively old information. So these were the, the, the specimens that were collected by the, the late, great uh, Dr. Discoro S. Rabor. So from, from several localities all over the Philippines. So a lot of them from Mindanao, from, from the Visayas and some, uh, some areas on, on Luzon Island. And um, we are tasked to digitize 1,500 specimen records. Uh, as of now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure. But the total number of bat specimens housed under the DS Robor collection is around, um, around 3,000 or 2,500 to 3,000 specimens. So we're, we're digitizing uh, more than half or more than half of uh, the DS Robor collection. So again, uh, the holders and the host institution would be UPLB MNH and uh, ACB. And right now, so we've uh, already digitized 83% uh, of the, the collection of the target, of our target uh, specimen record. So this equals to 1,250 specimen records encoded. So uh, malapit na, it's just a, it's a matter of a of, of few within the month. So we'll, we'll tama dex and over, we're going to be completing this um, publishing this data uh, in a matter within the month of, well, or hopefully in October. Okay. And then uh, of course we have other uh, deliverables and other taxa. So this one is for bat ectoparasites. Of course, um, the UPL, UPLB Museum of Natural History has, has always been uh, working on bat ectoparasites, even starting from the late uh, Luisito Cui uh, back in the early 80s, so uh, wherein he published uh, some very important work on bat ectoparasites. Of course, uh, Dr. Salcedo Eduardo also had, had published uh, several works on ectoparasites of several vertebrates, including bats. So, um, and then recently, or relatively recently, uh, with Dr. Irineo Litt and with the, the late um, James Alvarez, my very good friend, also started working, of, so essentially reviving um, the work on bat ectoparasites. So, so the, the bat ectoparasites, uh, the information, the, the records are currently stored or deposited in, at the Entomological Museum of UPLB MNH. And our target uh, for this project is around 700 specimen records. And currently, uh, we haven't really yet started encoding. Well, uh, at least uh, I think Mr. JJ Garcia, which is also the, pro the full-time project assistant for this, have already started um, uh, encoding with a, with a few specimen records. So we haven't really completed this, uh, but uh, the records we will, uh, of course, we'll be deriving from the information that are associated with the ectoparasites uh, that we've captured. So a lot of this uh, ectoparasite data that we've collected, of course, headed by, by James Alvarez, were taken from several localities all over the Philippines. So we have ectopar ecto data from Mount Makiling, of course, from Pangasinan, 
from Polilio, um, Cebuyan, uh, Cebu, and a lot of places in Mindanao. So target would be 700. And, um, and of course, um, Jeremy Naredo, uh, who's currently taking his PhD at uh, Ohio State University. So he's also been collecting mites as well, uh, bat mites and ticks from, uh, and has uh, assembled substantial number of collections. And we'll, uh, as much as possible, we will also try to, um, to look into the, the holdings that the collection, the specimen records that uh, the late Toti Kui uh, collected from the early 80s and uh, put into the, the GBIF portal. And then uh, lastly, uh, the last data set that we're trying to achieve to, to, to digitize would be the associated viruses and pathogens with bats. So as I've said earlier, so we've the Museum of Natural History, together with uh, some of the curators, including me, have conducted bat virus research since 2007 uh, with several universities and government institutions from Japan. Um, we've detected uh, a lot of pathogens such as coronavirus, I think you know, five, four or five genotypes. We've detected um, antibodies of, of Ebola Reston virus. Uh, we have a genome sequence of uh, gamma herpes, hantavirus, the ropin orthorio virus. Uh, we have pox virus as well. So medyo madame. So actually our work with bat viruses were actually one of the first and currently the most substantial amount, most substantial piece of work on, on bat-derived, uh, bat-borne viruses. So, um, so again, the data, data set type would be similar to others. Well, it's just um, occurrence data. So essentially, ang nangyayari dito is well, from which specimen of bat where it turned out positive for the certain type of virus. So for example, we captured a Rosettus amplexical data. So this is a common Rosett, the fruit bat, usually found in caves. So we found that uh, we captured one in UP Diliman, and it so happened that that, that bat as well uh, turned out positive for a genome of a beta coronavirus. So that will uh, we have information of that, uh, and then we can we can we can uh, input that to our Darwin Darwin core uh, format. So the expected number of records would be 100, 100 different types of viruses. So they can be well, a lot of coronaviruses, lots of teropin or coronaviruses. And including uh, antibody uh, neutralized presence of neutralizing antibodies. So it's not, not it's just uh, not just um, uh, genome sequence, but uh, new presence of neutralizing antibodies as well. So the data holders for this would be from our Japanese partners. So coming from you know, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Okayama University of Science. So we haven't really started this, this data set as of course we're still busy with completing the, the DS Raborka Raptor collection. But I believe this will, this will be the first time uh, for GBIF in general that virus information will be uploaded to the GBIF portal. So it's not just about uh, you know, the usual uh, resource that you can use for this would be uh, GenBank or uh, NIAD and, and other uh, other um, websites that host this information for, for viruses. But for GBIF, I think this project uh, holds the distinction, will hold the distinction of uh, uploading information on bat viruses as well. Of course, this has uh, significant implications uh, knowing full well the, the suspected origin of the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. So this information that we will be uploading will be very, very important for, for virologists uh, and epidemiologists worldwide. Okay, and other milestones that we had, uh, these are very significant milestones. So 
you've just um, submitted the midterm report to, to GBIF. And part of that, you know, the, the main milestone that has to be to be um, no, to be accomplished would be the 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 BIFA capacity enhancement workshop. So uh, the BIFA mandated that one of our members should be accredited, has to be has a certification by the GBIF in order to do the digitization. And uh, the, uh, our project assistant, uh, Mr. JJ Garcia, has gained an advanced certification that's issued by GBIF. I believe this is the first time for the Philippines. Eh? So it was issued, uh, it's a three years, three year certification. And what uh, what entitles JJ for with this certification is that they can now be a part of a training pool of uh, well, a training pool a trainer pool for for those other projects around the world. So they can train. You can be part of that training team that can train people that uh, wants to to do project on with GBIF. So I think it's the first for the Philippines. And of course, I said this earlier, uh, another milestone that we had would be, of course, the publication of our data set by, uh, with the GBIF. So this one with the, the UPLB m and uh, Zoology and Wildlife Museum Chiroptera collection, which I've already mentioned a while ago. So what's next? Uh, I think I'm about to finish with, with, with this, uh, this seminar, uh, this talk. So what's next for our project? So. Of course, I've uh, yeah, mentioned this uh, previously. So we still have to publish three more data sets to, to GBIF. Of course, uh, the DS Rabor Chiroptera collection is already yeah, almost complete, 83% complete. And then we're going to start working with our bat pathogens and bat ectoparasites. And then uh, also, we're going to do side by side with this uh, publication of this data set would be specimen imaging. So we're going to be uh, selecting representative species from our specimen records, of course, those with, the, with the, the, the optimum condition, with optimum condition. And uh, Sir Florenticus will be in charge with the specimen imaging. Uh, you've seen the, the, the specimens that were uh, the, the images of the specimens that he showed in the, the MNH website. It's really amazing. It's very spectacular. So you, the detail that are associated with, the, with these images. And then uh, another uh, work that, uh, in the pipeline, a target, would be to conduct a biodiversity data mobilization workshop. So here we will be setting up a workshop and, uh, to, to, to introduce GBIF and BIFA, and do an orientation workshop or training uh, on how to encode, of course, how to, to do the process of digitization of your data sets. And our target audiences or target participants would be various museums and universities with natural history collections, such as uh, from, from the National Museum, hopefully from several universities as well. And um, we're also uh, within the end of the year in, in December, uh, we will try, we will, uh, we will be, you know, we just submitted <clears throat> our abstract to the, the Biodiversity Conservation Society of the Philippines. Uh, we will be uh, presenting the, the, the updates or what, the, what have we done, particularly with the, the, the Chiroptera New Sears collection, which will be hopefully uh, presented by JJ Garcia, uh, and then the DS Rabor Chiroptera collection, care of Jan, uh, care of Dexter Lumiba, and the pathogens that are associated with with, the, with these with these bats that we collected uh, that appear in the specimen records, which I will be presenting. Hopefully, it will be accepted uh, as uh, uh, for presentation in BC at the BCSP in I believe it is going to be in Butuan, Busan. Okay, so. That ends my, my talk. I hope you learned something from our project. I'm ready for questions. Thank you very much.